If you're at a point in your life that's like pivotal, either do or die, sink or swim, you need to be creating space in your life on a consistent basis to hear your own inner guidance. Otherwise, you're just going to keep looking outwards for anybody else's opinions and they don't know your truth. They don't know your path. So that space is so crucial. Hello, my friends. Welcome to It's All Magic. I am your guide, your host, and your friend, Devin Hine. And here, we'll be discussing how to make your life truly feel like magic. I believe that our very existence on Earth is nothing less than a miracle, and that we all have so much potential to learn, to grow, to experience, and to create during our short time here. It is both my passion and my pleasure to walk this path of life optimization by your side, where we'll discuss topics like passion, purpose, intuition, manifestation, physical well-being, and much, much more. I'm a yoga teacher, a meditation and breathwork facilitator, and a national board certified health and wellness coach. But more importantly, I am an eternal optimist, a lover of life, and a forever student. It is my hope that with each and every episode, you too will finally start to believe it really is all magic after all. Ready to dive in? Let's do it. Hey friends, welcome back to another magical episode of It's All Magic. Today, we have a very magical guest indeed. We are joined by none other than Claire Olilla. She is a trauma-informed breathwork facilitator who helps high-performing women live essentially the life of their dreams. She helps people find the balance between peace and power using these integration somatic practices like tapping, vocal toning, plant medicine microdosing, breathwork, and much, much more. Today, we will touch on the science and spirituality of breath work. We will touch on anxiety in the body and how that manifests in our lives, manifestation, and so much more. I had such a fantastic time talking to Claire. She is simply a light in this world, but also has this really deeply grounded presence that I hope I one day embody myself as well. So before we dive into this episode, as always, I want to grant us the opportunity to take a few deep breaths. But because at the end of my interview with Claire, she actually guides us through some breath work herself, I want to keep this one really short and simple. Today, I want us to breathe in through the nose and then seal the lips and hum out of the nose. So you will be humming as you exhale through your nose. It's a very calming breath and it's called bee's breath or humming breath. So we'll do just five of those breaths and then we'll get on into the interview. So if you'd like to close your eyes, I invite you to do so now and we'll begin with just a deep cleansing breath together. So breathing in through the nose, filling up all the way. And open mouth, just let this one go. And begin the five. Inhale through the nose. Seal the lips and hum out completely. Mm -hmm. Inhale, round two. Seal the lips and hum it out. Mm. Gorgeous. And breathe in for a third time. And hum. Mm. Second to last breath in through the nose. And hum. Mm. And last one. Inhale through the nose. Make this your longest hum yet. Here we go. Mm. 
Beautiful. Breathe in through the nose and out through the nose. Hmm. You can flutter open your eyelids. And with that, without further ado, let's get on into the interview. Enjoy, my friends. I'll see you on the other side. Hello, and welcome back to another amazing episode of It's All Magic. Today, we have honestly one of the coolest guests in the world, I think. I don't know if she even knows that I think she's this awesome, but she is a breathwork facilitator that I met at a recent breathwork event I attended in LA that was mind-blowing. If you haven't already heard the episode of me recounting my experience at the Awaken Breathwork event, definitely check it out. But Claire was one of the facilitators that was helping guide the experience so masterfully and gracefully and I was almost giddy when I met her because I have followed her for so many years and I've gotten to watch her journey of just her blossoming and exploring her own practices and what works for her and then sharing them with the world so anyway without further ado hi Claire how are you (laughs) hey guys I'm so (laughs) stoked to be here any anyone who I meet through the breathwork world first of all is like instant homie and second of all meeting at Awaken and having like another connection outside of that just made my heart so full so I'm really excited to be here and have a stellar conversation Yeah, thank you for being here. And it's so funny. I know I said this to you at the event, but so for anyone listening, when I was checking into the event, Claire was checking me in and it was one of those situations of, I know your face. I know your face. Why do I know your face? Who are you? (laughs) And I put two and two together. It's like your name instantly clicked in my head. And I was like, oh, the breathwork girl. (laughs) So I just felt like, do I say something or do I not say something? And I went with, hi, I think you're wonderful. I know you, but I don't know you. And that's about all I have to say. (laughs) So it led us here. So I'm glad I said something. I'm so glad you did. Also like classic universe, just syncing up, like me checking you in that day, of course. Exactly. Exactly. So I want to kick it off with the question that I ask all of my It's All Magic interview guests, which is, For you, Claire, what makes life truly feel like magic? Mm, Life feels like magic when I'm connected with my purpose and my community. Mm. And luckily, those two things overlap (laughs) in my life. And I think for most people, honestly, it should. But that's been something that I really struggled with for a lot of years was finding like my people, like my tribe. And just in the past couple of years has been so flourishing in my life. And I'm really grateful for that. So that's yeah. what feels like magic in my life is when I'm pursuing my purpose actively and surrounded by people who I genuinely love and who genuinely inspire me along the way. Yeah, I think the sense of community that you found in Austin is so inspiring. Even in the past episodes, podcast episodes you've been on, where I've gotten to hear more about you going from lonelier times in your life to suddenly Mm -hmm. meeting all of your people in Austin. It's so heartwarming because I feel like we live in very lonely times and it's rare for someone to feel that they have any community at all, much less community that makes them the best version of themselves. Mm -hmm. So how do you feel like you even found the community you're in now for someone listening who's like, I don't have anyone that I could journal with or that I could talk about breath work or astrology with. How do you find your people? Well, you're so right, Devin, especially with COVID. I mean, the distancing, all the Zoom fatigue for sure. And then also just people being afraid to really express themselves fully, all of those elements combined, I think just created the most toxic soup of people feeling really isolated and alone. So for anyone who might be experiencing the remains of that, (laughs) or if you're in a season right now where maybe you had community, but now you are leaning into a new version of yourself and it might be creating distance between friends who were really good friends, but now it's just not feeling aligned. I met 
most of my best friends through Instagram. Wow. Funny enough. So I've got the friend who you listen to the podcast and met her mm-hmm. through Instagram. And then we connected through Austin. We were like, we follow each other on Instagram. Like, you seem cool. Let's just meet up and go for a walk or let's go mm-hmm. sauna or let's go do this. Mm-hmm. Another friend I met through a women's circle. Um, another friend I met at the sauna. So I think the more that you can actively pursue what lights you up, even if you are going to a yoga class alone or going to a breathwork class on your own or going to a group like public sauna and just connecting like actually go out of your way to connect and just chat with people and you don't have to be best friends instantly but the more that you can practice being first of all being in the places where you're likely going to find people who inspire you And also, if you don't live in an area where that's really common, seek that out through online connections because you never know. I mean, look at me and Devin right here. (laughs) (laughs) Online connection turned IRL connection turned podcast. Like, you just never know. Absolutely. It's so funny you say that at all because this next weekend, I'm actually going back to LA. Of course, you and I met two weeks ago in LA for an event. And I'm going back to LA for a friend reunion where I have these, let me count, four best friends that I met on a wellness retreat in Bali, Indonesia, Mm. five years ago. Actually, where I first experienced Awakened Breathwork, funny enough, that retreat. And we became such good friends that we actually decided we're going to meet up every single year at one of our homes. And what's so crazy, Claire, is that looking in from the outside you would never think that the five of us could connect we range from I'm the youngest I'm 26 years old the oldest might be 61 we are all like the full spectrum of ages every single one of us different ethnicities religions one girl is from the country Qatar Middle East one is from Colombia in South America we have like nothing aligns except for our values and our Mm. interests and our vulnerability. And so we have done the impossible of, you know, how many times have you been at some sort of event or retreat? It's like, oh my gosh, we should get together. We should do this every year. (laughs) And then it's like, wow, five years later, we've done it every single year we've been to one of the ladies houses in minnesota we've been to san diego we've been to la like we're going to qatar one year and so i think as you said going to the events or going to the spaces that light you up and therefore hold the people that will be interested in the same things like just put yourself out there i was terrified flying to Bali, Indonesia alone for a retreat where I knew no one. And it was the most transformational thing. And so I think you're, you're spot on with everything you said. Well, think about it. Like what bonds people together normally is maybe sharing the same age and you happen to be in school together and you grow up together or maybe location because you're neighbors and so you've got that like childhood friend turned adult friend thing or maybe you just happen to work together so you're work buddies but those are all very superficial things to have in common Mm -hmm. and the real like soul connections are when you share values with people when you share you know maybe health is a top value or growth or vitality or aliveness like expression all of these things are like the real glue that hold a friendship together so i am not shocked at all that y'all were on this (laughs) retreat had an amazing transformational experience together Mm. and then the fact that you guys have been consistent every single year to meet up is so dope so yeah. dope oh my and gosh so rare like we yeah. don't even understand how that's happened but it has <laughs> so taking a step back from community for a second because obviously community is so essential but a big part of finding your people is first finding you and finding who you are and what you value so i want to start with the question of what do you do claire and more importantly why do you do what you do 
What I do, <laughs> I feel like, um, have you seen that meme that's like me explaining to people what I do for work? And it's like this space person, like pulling a human through a portal, like in outer space. <laughs> it's so true. Well, it's honestly, the question of like, who are you? What do you do? Is the most feared question. It's terrifying. It's, it's so, so hard. So we'll just start small. We'll build throughout the episode. No pressure, my friend. <laughs> no, I can totally explain what I do. I just find it hilarious. The simplest way to describe it is that I facilitate a direct experience of healing and transformation, mostly for high-performing women who want to access their peace and their power. Because oftentimes, especially with women, we can lean towards one or the other where we're like either in our feminine all the time and just kind of like chillers, which is like kind of me at my default Mm -hmm. or like super in the hyper masculine, like go, go, go all the time, probably um, has a default mode of some anxiety or maybe even aggression or however it might come through. But as some women have a really hard time quieting that and getting still and just relaxing and softening into their femininity. So I use tools like breath work, like microdosing, like other integration tools and techniques to help women balance those different energies within them and ultimately create a life where they feel resilient and in their fullest expression and alive. Beautiful, my friend, especially the balance between peace and power because Mm -hmm. i mean everything in life as you said it really is the balance of yin and yang feminine and masculine and also as you said we all have those energies within us but we tend to kind of lean towards one side of the spectrum and i think one reason why i'm even drawn to your piece is that i lean more towards the power (laughs) side (laughs) and my husband and I will just always say he'll he'll notice sometimes he's like dev you're in your masculine because I (laughs) can grind like nothing comes more naturally to me than hustling pushing down my discomfort doing the hard things is the easy thing for me Mm -hmm. but the hardest thing for me is relaxing or if I have an extra hour not getting something done and maybe just I don't know, like sitting on the couch, <laughs> like, mm-hmm. it's, it's really hard for me. And so I think for all of us, no matter where people are on that spectrum, even for men who are listening that, you know, they also have that feminine and masculine, I think learning to kind of push ourselves into the side of the spectrum that's a little uncomfortable so we can find that balance. That's where the magic happens. Yeah. I'm curious. Can I ask you a quick question? Of course. How did you notice that that go, go, go mode started to hurt you? Because for a lot of people, that productivity is a benefit, right? It's like, oh man, I wish I could, I could hustle, you know, Mm -hmm. but how did you come into these practices and what specifically just so people can kind of like go, oh, that's it. Or I have that too. Yeah. What did you notice? Honestly, it's a great question. I've noticed it my entire life. Just for context, when I was, it might have been in second grade, my teacher pulled me out of class one day and literally said, stop working so hard. I was in second grade. And that continued through my whole life in high school. I believe it was maybe 11th grade. My history teacher one day pulled me aside after class and said, I want you to not study for the next test. And he said, if you do not get the A plus that you want, I will literally ignore your grade. I won't put it in. And so I'm saying this not to brag about work ethic or whatever, but to say that it has been... I mean, it might have been a crutch. Maybe that's where I find my sense of self-worth. I have no doubt that it is. But my whole life, it's like my identity has been, I'm the hardest worker in the wor- mm-hmm. in the room. And I very much get that from my family. Not even that they put pressure on me. They were always like, Dev, stop working so hard. But when I look at them, especially my dad, is the 
hardest worker I know. My entire life, he's woken up at 5.30 a.m. exactly on the dot to do his same hour workout every single day. I mean, high-powered executive in Silicon Valley, turned into a university president. Like, I look around at the people that I admire, and I see work ethic. Mm -hmm. And so I have embodied that in my own way. But your question of how did you know it hurt you, I have been an anxious wreck my whole life. (laughs) So I very much struggle with just complete burnout. And even in the present moment, I, I actually haven't shared this with you, but one, one month ago, I actually quit a corporate job that I was in. I'd only been in it for a year and a half. I had done my own health and wellness entrepreneurs entrepreneurship stuff before I joined that and then long story short got totally burned out because I worked Mm -hmm. so freaking hard and I wasn't (laughs) getting much back and so I decided to go more of a conventional path and pretty quickly once I'd started that my soul my heart my gut was saying this isn't it like your heart still lies in this other world but you have to do it differently this time, Dev. Like you have to or it won't work. And so here I am just a month into the game. I had started my podcast while I was still at my job, but it's so interesting how easily I fall into complete overworking. I mean, I Mm -hmm. spend 50 to 60 hours a week on this podcast alone. And it's just interesting that our patterns repeat it's, it's one of those, I've talked about this quote on the podcast of you live it till you learn it. <laughs> like mm-hmm. notice the freaking pattern or it's going to keep repeating. Yes. So I just, yeah, so many things. I mean, exhaustion, fatigue, burnout, anxiety. And I mean, the, the gift and the burden is that I can override that until you can't. Mm-hmm. So that's my long winded answer of saying this is a, lifelong pursuit and journey and uh any words of wisdom you have would be (laughs) warmly welcomed (laughs) (laughs) well first of all just like honoring you in your journey right because that's where all the lessons are learned is in the path and in the this way no that way and most people are afraid to freaking pivot so the fact that you've not only pivoted once but twice and honored what your body needed is the coolest thing in the world to me at least so yeah really honoring that. that process and the awakened journey I'm sure was a really great way to just create space and fill your own cup in that way yeah yeah absolutely and every time I've done breath work in the way that you facilitate or awaken Mm -hmm. breathwork facilitates, which we'll get into, I've often connected pretty much every time I've connected with my inner child Mm -hmm. because she feels so neglected and she is sunshiny and warm and she loves to dance and sing and wear her Tinkerbell costume. (laughs) And she's awesome but she's also this scared, anxious little girl Mm -hmm. that started working too hard, far too young. And so I'm constantly trying to reconnect with her and tend to her and ask her, what do you need little dev? Like I'm here for you. So that's, that's the journey for me. But speaking of childhood, I wanted to ask you, you know, when you think about the work that you do now as this healer woman, this space holder, this breathwork facilitator, what experiences or influences throughout your life, let's say childhood, adolescence, even earlier adult years, what experiences or influences do you think guided you to becoming the space holder, healer woman that you are today? Mm, Definitely from a young age, I had an advantage of normalizing the spiritual realm and okay. normalizing getting in touch with my subtle senses. So my aunt is a medium and her aunt was very intuitive. 
So I'm like, I feel like it just passes down through the nieces and my family. I'm really curious which of my nieces is going to be like super intuitive. Right. But I remember having sleepovers at her house when I was like eight to 10 years old. And there was one time in particular where she gave me the heads up that like, hey, you know, there's ghosties that live in my house. That's what she would call the spirits. She would call Mm -hmm. them ghosties. And she would just speak so nonchalantly about it about if anything weird happens to you tonight, just surround yourself in white light and tell them you're not available for this and they'll go away. And so I was just like, uh, okay. (laughs) And there was one night in particular, I remember the whole like comforter got pulled off me as I was falling asleep. And I like yanked it back up to my chin, surrounded myself in white light in my head and said, go away, go away, go away. They left me alone. Wow. Years later in college, my dorm ended up being haunted and I was like the only person in the whole place that this ghost like didn't bother because I just wasn't afraid. I'm like, I know how to, I know how to set boundaries in that way. Yeah. And so that was definitely a huge influence was growing up with an aunt who would do card pulling with me and would do table tipping with me and all these like really cool intuitive practices and just really normalizing it Mm, I love that so how did those practices or experiences kind of continue throughout your life was it kind of a childhood thing that you left behind started marching your own path and then somehow you came (laughs) back around to it like how did that journey work Yeah, definitely. I didn't grow up thinking like, oh, I want to be a medium or a breathwork mentor. That's definitely not how that played out. But I was definitely perfectionist, like straight A student kind of gal and had a very specific path of how I saw my life going. I wanted to be a chief sustainability officer at a big corporation, went through all these interviews with Adidas and Nat Geo and like all these really cool companies yeah. but didn't get the job like I would I would interview and then over and over and over again didn't get the job so now I'm graduated from college with two degrees and a minor and I'm like what the fuck am I doing like yeah. what I did all this work for what so ended up in a place where I lived back at home with my parents worked at a smoothie shop part-time nannied read a lot of books simultaneously had just met my now husband who we had to date long distance for a year but he was very much into mindfulness and meditation and psychedelics and all the things and so he was a huge expander for me during that time in my life where my world got flipped right upside down suddenly everything that i had ever pictured for myself in my life was just a wash and it was really unsettling really ungrounding so i took about a full year to just live back home with my parents study learn practice and that year of my life which was 2017 was the most pivotal transformational year ever i remember making a list of 52 things so one thing for each week i made a change and like was swapping out all my cleaning products and food to organic and like got a period cup and like all the i was like i'm just gonna go all in on this new version of me because this is who i want to be and literally made one swap every single week for a year and by the end of that year i was unrecognizable That's incredible. So it sounds like for anyone else going through that kind of experience, total rock bottom, total rut, what would be your advice? Would it be to make small changes each week or what were the things that really helped pivot your life at that point? Well, meditation, first of all, Mm. that was like my gateway into everything because that just helped me create so much space, meditation and journaling. And then eventually breathwork came in the picture for me so i would highly recommend honestly if anyone's listening and you struggle with meditation please try breathwork and don't just try one kind of breathwork try multiple kinds of breathwork because i hated breathwork when i first tried it it did not resonate with me i did not think it was for me 
I did not come back to it for a long, long time until I did with different facilitators and different techniques. And then I just absolutely fell in love with it. So that would be my recommendation first and foremost. If you're at a point in your life that's like pivotal, either do or die, like either I sink or swim, like you need to be creating space in your life on a consistent basis to hear your own inner guidance. Otherwise, you're just going to keep looking outwards for anybody else's opinions and they don't know your truth. They don't know your path. So that space is so crucial. Yeah. So well said. It honestly, your 52 things reminds me of something Mm -hmm. that I also did in my own life when I hit times of, oh my God, please tell me something's going to go right soon. I created this thing in college. I had a summer where I think it might've been between my sophomore and junior years and maybe the next year. I'm not sure. But there was a summer where I felt really lackluster. I think it was because, you know, I wasn't in classes, so I wasn't working towards that. I think I had an internship that was kind of fine, but it wasn't my full thing. And I woke up one day and I thought, I need to do something that makes me proud of myself. I need to do something that makes me feel strong and empowered and capable. So I came up with this thing that I called Project Proud of Me. And Project Proud of Me was that I had to do one thing every single day for 30 days for a full month that would make me feel proud of myself. Mm -hmm. And so at that point in my journey, it was that I would wake up every day and I did 30 minutes of yoga, journaling and like five minutes of meditation because I'm someone that is really interested in a lot of things. So it's hard for me to stick with one practice. It's like, I'll be obsessed with breath work and then I'll be obsessed with journaling and then I'll be really into tarot and then really into Reiki. And so I thought I would be so proud of myself if I did this same practice every day for 30 days. And so I did it and Honestly, Claire, just at the end of those 30 days, I felt like a different woman because mm. I felt like me again. And I, I do feel like our true essence for all of us is this vibrant, capable spirit. And it's just when we layer on stress or shoulds or whatever that we forget that. And so I used that practice throughout my life. Anytime I hit kind of a rock bottom, I would say it's project proud of me time (laughs) and it's really Mm -hmm. saved me. Yeah. The stress and all the layers of everything honestly is so interesting because at our core, like we're meant to create stuff. Like we're what separates humans from other animals is our intelligence and our capacity to like make things better and create things in the world. So the, anytime someone tells me like, Oh, I'm just not creative or I'm just not this or that. It's like, no, you are just all your energy is going towards trying to create homeostasis in your body because you're either overwhelmed, overworked, stressed, or like afraid of when the other shoe is going to drop. Yeah. So anytime that you can commit to regular clarity practices like breathwork, like meditation, like journaling, it's going to free up energy for you to then go create. Because Mm -hmm. when you're not busy consuming all of your energy for just trying to create balance in the body mind system then that energy gets to go somewhere else and that's what really excites me about this work is yes let's get you regulated yes let's teach you self-soothing practices yes let's get you in balance but once you're kind of stabilized there like what's next Like, what do you want to create? What do you want to make happen? What excites you about life? Like, let's go there and use these tools for a bigger game. Absolutely. It reminds me of Maslow's hierarchy of needs in Mm -hmm. psychology, if you're familiar with that. Just that once you have mastered your survival needs and you can move up to relationships and eventually to self-actualization, it's like... On this podcast even, when I talk about pursuing your purpose and being 
unapologetically ambitious about it and like go for your dreams. There are times where I'll sit back and I think it's a shame that in some ways it is a privilege to even be able to say that. And I don't think it should be a privilege. I think it is everyone's God-given right to fulfill the duty, the role that they came into this world to fulfill. And yet, because of the way our world is set up, et cetera, et cetera, sometimes it is a privilege to even other, utter the word purpose. For some people, it's just about getting food on the table or keeping a roof over their heads. And so I, I recognize that a lot in what I say because I, I just imagine a different world where everyone can truly live the life they came here to live. Mm-hmm. But anyway, all of that is to say I completely agree with you that, that once you can get past that, that stage, it's like, oh, I do actually have a lot of creative energy. Oh my gosh, I'm creative. I can create things. It's amazing. (laughs) (laughs) And creative, like, doesn't have to mean making a watercolor picture or like, you know, like creation energy can even just be having the guts to set a boundary with somebody or like have a hard conversation or maybe explore options outside of what your normal default day looks like. So Absolutely. I just want to make that distinction for people listening. When I say creation energy, I'm not necessarily saying like go dance or sing a song. I'm saying like, yeah. what do you want to make real in your life from yes. the non-physical into the physical? Yes, but also go dance and sing a song. But I'll, yeah, do it <laughs> while dancing, like please, because that's <laughs> even better. <laughs> exactly. So going back for a second to that time of your rut. I believe based on your Instagram, that was 2017 era ish. So at that time you engage in these practices, 52 changes you make in your life. And I know at some point after that, you got into mindset coaching Mm -hmm. and helping these high performing women with mindsets for success and balance in their life, all of that. Can you walk us through kind of what that journey was like getting into that and what were the the practices the techniques that you were helping women with yeah so it was a three-month program called freedom mindset academy 20 women went through it it was absolutely beautiful like my baby i loved it so much got great results and some of the practices included included meditation and mindfulness techniques. Also, there was a conscious discomfort module with cold showers and rewiring your stress response. So a little bit of somatic stuff there. And then some hypnosis work as well. So there was some NLP mixed in there with hypnosis, which was really powerful. However, what I noticed first in myself and then kind of had the aha moment was that I was starting to struggle with keeping up with my own progress because a lot of these mental cognitive processes just weren't really sticking with me. Like I had to keep going back into them and not feeling like I was really like stabilizing a new baseline. So they kind of helped at first and then I hit like this wall where like my own tools weren't working. And I was a little disoriented, like, well, shit, if they're not working for me, then how can these work for my clients long term? So the big switch for me was kind of a combination of things. Um, One definitely had some very powerful experiences with non-ordinary states of consciousness through Mm -hmm. breath work, through other medicinal uses of substances to assist in that process and also I got really I was really sick I had an Mm -hmm. allergy that I was trying to heal for years and years and years but the doctors weren't figuring out that it was an allergy they thought it was this other thing and then this other thing and kept giving me all these creams and prescriptions and I was like okay I don't think you guys actually know what you're talking about ended up discovering it was an allergy on my own and through tapping actually I was able to start to reduce my fear load of reintroducing those foods back into my diet and now I'm able to eat certain foods that I wasn't able to eat before so that whole process 
of discovering the power of my own somatic intelligence and also the deeper layer of wisdom within was really what brought me to breath work and like okay this is what i need to not just learn about but master like i want to be a masterful facilitator and that's what brought me to hella and lucas because they were offering this nine month training trauma informed balancing the science spirituality physiology with 19 hour long breathwork journeys over the course of nine months it was absolutely life-changing and the best thing i ever did wow that sounds life-changing i mean after having done just a handful in my life Mm -hmm. 19 sounds (laughs) sounds like something it sounds amazing but it also sounds like something (laughs) it's deep work it's not for the faint of heart yeah i completely agree so for people listening that are like okay you're mentioning somatic work what the heck is that? Can you kind of explain the difference between kind of the mindset work you were doing and then this body stuff, these embodiment practices? Like, what is that? Yeah. So mindset work oftentimes uses a lot of NLP techniques, which stands for neuro-linguistic programming. So you can use certain language patterns to shift beliefs, and it's very powerful. I don't want to discredit it because I still use a lot of mindset tools today for myself and with my clients, but the difference now is that I'm merging the two so that they can better uh, access the subconscious mind and be anchored in because the body is in a state of homeostasis so then on the flip side somatics is more related to the body so breath work for example on a physical Mm -hmm. level you are sending your breath in and out and it's expanding your diaphragm it's creating space in the physical body You're also activating your limbic brain, which processes emotions and memories outside of a sense of time. So when you go into a breathwork journey, what I really love about it is it's a very holistic approach across physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. Mm. Because you're having that physical sort of clearing within the system, connection with the breath, tapping into the vagus nerve, and also activating the limbic brain tapping into that mental processing because you're activating your limbic brain now you have access to all of these emotions that could be from years and years and years ago but because it operates outside of a sense of time you're able to bring them into the now process those old emotions in the now complete the loop, complete any stress response or survival response that maybe in the past it wasn't an appropriate moment or context to have a full release or a full response. So you get to close that loop in the now and create harmony within the body-mind system. And on the spiritual level, that's a whole other thing, but you really gain access to your inner wisdom. Many people report... um, Gain, gaining wisdom from past loved ones and having really meaningful connections. So that's not to be overlooked as well. Absolutely. And I think it's also important to note that when we're talking about breath work in this context, it's different mm-hmm. than the techniques I guide at the beginning of these episodes. Those are also healing and powerful. But when we're talking about breath work, Can you kind of break down what kind of breath you are referring to and what these breath work journeys look like yeah so typically it's a combination of what's called activation and restorative breath work so restorative breath work is very gentle it's just a gentle breath in and out through your nose very grounding very soothing activation breath work makes up the bulk of these journeys and often looks like a deep and full breath in and out through your mouth where you're not only sending the breath down into the belly, is, which is what a lot of breath techniques really emphasize, expanding your belly space, maybe the diaphragm, but it's a full body breath. So you're sending this breath into your lower belly, your abdomen, diaphragm, chest, all the way up to the clavicle, 
And you are essentially creating a conscious hyperventilation to activate the sympathetic nervous system so that you can be in a stress response in a controlled, safe, nourishing, loving setting. That's where all of those emotions come up and we incorporate tools like touch, tapping, and vocal toning to also access harmonization within the body-mind system. Yeah, so well explained. And if anyone listening has heard my episode where I explain my experience with the Awaken Breathwork event recently, and I mean, I talk about how you can hear hundreds of people sobbing, Mm. screaming, making sounds, moaning, groaning, and it is such a powerful release. And when I've talked to people about these events, sometimes I will get, well, isn't it weird to hear all these other people, you know, screaming or crying? (laughs) And I always say it's actually not. By hearing them have their own experience, it gives us permission to do the same thing. And so it's, I just always like to say like no one, people that haven't had this experience can't even fathom how powerful and life transformational they can be. Yeah. I just was on another podcast the other day and I was talking about expression Mm. and it's such a funny thing. The way that someone else responds to other people's emotions says a lot about their relationship to their own emotions because if someone's crying or is frustrated or whatever and the first response is well what's wrong like even the assumption that something is wrong with that expression like is such a telltale sign rather than asking you know what's going on or like what's real for you or what are you feeling or how does that feel in your body how can i support so to be in a room like that it can be very intimidating and I honor that. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Even for me, the first time I was like, oh, whoa, this is a lot of energy. But that permission slip and to be in that setting and just honor people's processes and honor your own process. And like, you can also use it as a playground to just explore like, what would it feel like to emote in a way that I wouldn't normally It can be so empowering. And you had that beautiful photo taken of you with Hella supporting you. I loved seeing that so much. It was so (laughs) beautiful. Well, it's so funny when I saw the video. It's like, of course, my eye mask is like half on top of my forehead, (laughs) half over my eyes, making this ugly crying face. But I mean, in the moment, it was exactly what I needed. And I love that you even have talked about that we all go through stressors on a daily basis that we don't allow to exit our body. And I had heard once maybe from another facilitator that if you look in nature and you see an animal, of course, go through a stressor, I'm sure you've heard this, they will shake, their body will kind of get rid of that. And then they're done. And the prey animal is going back about their day. Whereas for us, because we don't get to shake in a grocery store when we're yelled at or whatever it might be, we hold on to that. And Mm -hmm. that stress is literally stored inside of our tissues, our cells, and energetically that stays with us. So I kind of, if, if you're open to it, can you touch a little bit on the energetic and spiritual aspects of breath work and how we can even enter these non-ordinary states of consciousness you keep bringing up? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when you're in that state, oftentimes people will describe it as like a flow state or maybe a trance state. I like to call it self energy when it's like everything else disappears and it's me. And I just feel so connected with the highest version of myself. Mm -hmm. And there's no fear. There's no doubt. There's no judgment. There's no shame. It's just all love. That's how I know I'm like, okay, here here we are. <laughs> We're back. <laughs> We've arrived. <laughs> so yeah. if that's something you want to experience, highly recommend some activation breath work. But regardless, that energetic, spiritual side of the practice, 
What's so interesting, and I'm, I'm trying to find a way to explain this in the simplest of terms, but when you think about when you're driving in a car and maybe you don't know the directions very well, maybe it's dark, maybe it's raining really hard, and you're trying to focus really hard on this one sense of your vision, you're probably going to turn the radio down or you're probably going to like reduce other stimulation to just focus in on what sense needs to be fully on in that moment. Or if you're listening really hard, maybe someone's whispering or maybe there's like a noise in the wall, you're probably going to close your eyes or you're probably going to squint and like really listen hard to hear it better. So in breath work, what can often happen is when that subtle sense is activated and there's different subtle senses, clairvoyance could be like an inner mind vision, clairaudience can be maybe hearing voices or hearing guidance, clairsentience can be more feeling based and claircognizance can just be like an inner knowing. So when those subtle senses start to come into tune, you're likely going to be sending less energy to these other senses in order to focus more on these subtle senses. So your hearing might fade out. You're probably closing your eyes with an eye mask. Your body might go a little numb, but it opens you up to these other senses that all of us have access to. We are all intuitive beings. It's just a matter of whether or not you're practicing it and listening and on a consistent basis just asking for messages to come through while also honoring there's a whole other conversation we could have around energetic hygiene and boundaries but um for now that's like a little intro into the spiritual and energetic side of things yeah absolutely i i mean you could see my jaw dropped that whole time but when you were explaining (laughs) you know decreasing some of our other senses to focus on one it's so real it's like I instantly was in that car raining turning down the radio yeah and even in these breathwork sessions it is exactly that it's like the passage of time isn't a thing and you're half in the real world and half not but I'm Mm -hmm. also standing there with my inner child and speaking to to a deceased loved one it's crazy it's like the realms, the dimensions all meld into one beautiful thing. So I love the way you explained that. And do you mind sharing, I know you've shared this on past podcasts, your, it might've been maybe your second experience with breathwork, the Mm -hmm. one that you did in Toronto and what that experience was like. It's the coolest story. (laughs) (laughs) This is my favorite story. So of course I'll share it. (laughs) So I did a breathwork journey in February of, I think it was 2021 in Toronto. And you can picture I'm in a two bedroom apartment on the 21st floor of a high rise, super gray day in downtown Toronto, February, gloomy as all get out. And I'm in this breathwork journey and all of a sudden I hear this voice in my head that goes, mommy, mommy. And I'm like, oh my God, because I've had visions of my future daughter before and she had come to me in meditation, but I had never been able to like communicate with her and I hear her voice and I just instantly know. I'm like, oh my God, it's you. And I had this moment in the breath work of realizing I could talk back in my head and like actually communicate and ask questions. So I ask like, hey, is that you? Can I know your name? And I hear this giggle in my head and she just goes, mommy, it doesn't matter what my name is. You're going to call me by a nickname anyways. (laughs) And I'm at this point bawling, like full sob, tears, like (gasps) snot everywhere. And I just feel her so strongly. And I already can't wait for the day when she's like here in the physical and can listen back to all these podcasts I've told this story on. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, and so the sign that I know she would always send me is rainbows. So in this experience, I ask her, I'm like, well, how do I know you're here? She goes, because I send you, I send the rainbows to you. And I'm like, okay, well, duh. And I asked if she could send one to me. 
she goes, no, I, I don't think so. It's going to be really hard. I can try. But it was so gloomy. It was like snowing. It was disgusting outside. And then a little while later, I hear, okay, actually I can, but you're going to have to go out into the other room. So I kind of resolve that, finish my breathwork journey, ground in. And the second I walk out through the door is a rainbow as fuck journal just sitting (laughs) on the kitchen table. And I'm just like, you little cutie. Like, oh Oh my my. God. That is wild. I love those stories of communicating with beings, people not yet in this world or in this realm. I think those are so powerful. And Mm -hmm. I also have no doubt that when your daughter arrives one day, you'll look down and it'll just be like, I know you. I know you, honey. Welcome. I know. And she actually sent a rainbow in LA when I was out there the day after the Awakened Breathwork journey. I was with a friend walking on the beach and it kind of rained that morning and then it cleared up. So we walked on the beach and the second we started talking about babies and motherhood, she goes, look, a rainbow. And I look behind me and there's just a beautiful rainbow right directly behind me. I'm just like, of course, of course there is. (laughs) Have you ever heard of the book Spirit Babies? I have, and I need to read it, but I just Me haven't too. yet. <laughs> I haven't either, but the first time I heard about it on a podcast, I mean, it's just, it sounds like kind of a similar idea that we can communicate yeah. with our children before they're in human form, and that just gives me chills. Like, I could cry just thinking about that. And mm-hmm. so the fact that a practice like breath work literally grants us that almost psychic ability. I think so many people, especially people listening, might feel like, well, Claire's special or Devin's special. Like some of these people just have these abilities. Obviously, some people have different abilities than others, but the thing that is so powerful about breath work amongst all the other things is that it allows us to all be that powerful to all have that ability to communicate even when lucas had shared his story at the event and i'm Mm -hmm. sure you had heard it a million times but the fact that he was able to communicate with his deceased father and his father said you are enough my son like oh my gosh that got chills all over my body (laughs) yes that is a lifetime of healing in a one hour breathwork journey that's incredible Mm -hmm. oh I love it. So when we talk about breath work and other somatic practices, you mentioned tapping, vocal toning. Can you share a little bit more about what those are as well and how they kind of integrate into the breath work experience? Yeah. So a lot of this is about coming back to our primal nature and coming back to working with the body's natural rhythm and energetic flow. So touch, you can just think of as grounding touch anywhere on your body. And it, for me, it simulates like, imagine if I was like a baby and like, when you think of a baby, like they don't have their own regulation system. Their mother is their regulation system. So Mm -hmm. that touch to hear a heartbeat, to like sync up with something else is so primal. And you can do that for yourself just by, I mean, skin to skin is best, but however you can access a sort of grounding touch is going to be very soothing. Mm. Tapping, another technique you can think of as similar to acupuncture in the same way that acupuncture works with pressure in certain meridian systems in the body, you can work with tapping as well. So you don't necessarily have to follow any certain points. I find it actually better if I just take more of an intuitive approach because then I'm not locked up in my head being like, where's the right place to tap? And I can just follow, where does it feel good to tap? Where does it feel right? Where does it feel like energy is stuck or blocked or dense? And I just go there. It can also just be a really great way to come back to the present moment. Honestly, talking about like, freaking out in a grocery store or like having anxiety or anything like that if it's not an appropriate place where you can just whip out a five minute breathwork session or something like that (laughs) i'll just tap 
There was one time my friend laughs with me all the time at a music festival. I had my phone stolen. And during the whole rest of the set, I was just tapping and breathing. And then within like an hour, I was just like, all right, whatever it is, what it is. But yeah, it's such a great way to regulate. And then the third tool, vocal toning, works with sound. So it works with your own voice. And you can think of that vibration as just like harmonizing the entire body mind system just a hum or an ohm or if there's a lot of energy to move then maybe screaming into a pillow or whatever you need to do in order to help that energy move and flow yeah absolutely when i guide breath work at the beginning of these episodes i will often have us share (laughs) sound just like you and I did before we started recording so for anyone listening before we hit record we were like oh let's do 10 breaths together that feels nice and on the last one we both were like oh (laughs) (laughs) and it just feels so good and what's really crazy is I feel like a lot of the practices that you're even sharing yes it's great to know the actual technique but a lot of them almost seem like common sense in the way of, and I don't say that to diminish it, but I'll give an example. When I was in high school and like early college before I had kind of delved into some of these practices myself, I remember driving to dates with boys and I would be so nervous that I would sing like I would just belt songs. And part of it was kind of to amp myself up, but I started noticing that when I sang, when I used my voice voice, and also extended that exhale, which I now know, that it calmed me down. And so that's an example of, we all know that touch is healing. I mean, we've been told that we need, what is it, like eight hugs a day to regulate. Mm-hmm. And yet we just don't do these things because they're just not part of our culture. And yet the second when we're in some sort of stressful, anxiety-provoking situation, all we need is to be held even by ourselves. Yeah. And it can be so healing to hold yourself. Like a lot of people will think that couldn't have the same effect. And to an extent, you know, we do need community and we need people, but there arguably is something more powerful about holding yourself through the depths holding yourself through a deep response or a dense emotion and talk about inner child healing right to just reparent yourself in that way and say i got you i'm right here i love you thank you body thank you life i got you yeah absolutely and that's a practice that i come back to time and time again I mean we talked at the beginning of this episode about how I can find myself in that like severe intense overworking place a lot and when I find myself in those situations I will even take myself for a walk and just talk to myself the whole time I probably look insane I promise you I'm not (laughs) but it's it's things of like you're gonna be okay Dev like you're gonna you're gonna get through this, you're figuring things out, you're doing the best you can. And then sometimes I'll sing myself like a Disney song and mm-hmm. everything is okay in the world. <laughs> you know what I've been loving lately is what? voice note processing. So Ooh, instead of journaling, I'll go for a walk and I'll have my phone on airplane mode and I'll just record a voice note of myself like either journal dumping or sometimes if I'm feeling like I'm in a creative rut. I'll go for like a 45 minute walk around the neighborhood and just talk until whatever I need to come through comes through. And it always does. That is awesome. I will definitely be taking that. Thank you. That's amazing. So one last thing I want to ask about breath work, kind of going back for a second. I know at the Awaken Breathwork event, Hella and Lucas said something about how doing this form of kind of activation breath work, we can access the past, the present, and the future. Mm -hmm. So we've been talking a little bit about the past, like past traumas, stressors, anxieties, fears, potentially even things from past lives, if you believe in that. Can you talk to us about how it can help us 
quote unquote, access the future? I mean, for people that are listening that are into manifestation and all of that, how can breath work actually help us with that process? Yeah, absolutely. So breath work helps you access the subconscious mind, which if you are familiar with manifestation, then that's definitely the place you want to be when we're going into any sort of visualization or feeling process. So what's so powerful about breath work is that a lot of people will be like, well, manifestation just isn't working for me. But they're literally like going about their day and then sitting down and doing a visualization without any shift in consciousness or in their brainwave state or in their feeling state. And manifestation works best when you're pairing ideally some sort of flow state or trance state in the brain with an intense feeling like gratitude or excitement or joy and then walking through some sort of visualization or affirmation process. So um, Lucas, who works with a lot of celebrities and people who are really at the top of their game, what he'll often do with them is guide them through visualizations paired with breath work um, and help people mental rehearse how they want to show up as their highest self in the future, in the now. And that's how he's been working with Jake Paul, like winning all of these fights. And that's how he's working with really high caliber musicians and artists to help them access that creative potential and flow state. Mm. So for me, I love, I've got a, I've got my own breathwork platform and there's a practice in there called shift from survival to creator mode. And that's exactly what that practice is for, is shifting out of maybe a dysregulated state and then dropping into a visualization and allowing yourself to access that creative energy within. Yeah, it's so powerful. And I love that you're talking about combining visualization with the breath work because Mm -hmm. I've often talked on this podcast about how when you visualize like your body and mind don't really know the difference between what's real and what's imagined and that's why that mental rehearsal whether you're an NBA player or whatever even going into a boardroom if you have mentally rehearsed it's as if you've actually practiced Mm -hmm. and I remember in high school I was a competitive dancer my whole life and I would lay in bed the night before a high school rally where we would perform and I would mentally rehearse the dance and of course I didn't know about any of this but I remember I would visualize the full audience and I would get butterflies I'd get like nervous excited and I would do the dance and I would kind of do the facial expressions and (laughs) the next day when I woke up it's like I felt ready because oh I practiced last night and I didn't even know any of this this science and so it's amazing that exactly as you said when you compare the visualizations with the feeling and kind of working through the subconscious mind using breath work, it's like you've unlocked a whole other level. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because most people will ask for something that they've never had, but they, when faced with the actual challenge or opportunity that would be like that hinging point into that new reality, they like would have no idea what to do in that scenario. So to go into breath work, access your subconscious mind, work with visualization techniques, that's the only way that you can actually feel prepared in that moment in an experience that you've never had before. Because if you're asking for something new, what that's requiring of you is to become a version of you that you've never been before. Yeah. So the best way to be prepared for that and to feel confident because talk about imposter syndrome like most people feel that and yeah it's because you're literally trying to do something you've never done before but you can practice that in these visualization techniques and feel confident and ready and then that just becomes all the more fuel to that prayer and process of being like yeah life throw it at me like i'm ready let's go yeah Oh, so beautifully said. I could talk about this topic forever (laughs) because I've loved manifestation for years, but it wasn't until more so even in the last 
year or two, I started learning more about the embodiment side of manifestation because just like you, I was deep in kind of the mindset work for a long time and affirmations and I am not an anxious person. I am a, I'm a carefree person. I'm flexible. I'm spontaneous. All of those things. And unless you can actually teach your body to believe them, you're not going to believe them. Like you're not, you're not an idiot. <laughs> so I think pairing that with, as you so beautifully said, the real feelings of gratitude or confidence, even if it's feigned for five mm -hmm. minutes, like fake it if you have to, your body starts to get used to that emotional state. And in the same way that we have kind of a body set point in terms of weight, I believe we have an emotional set point. And the more you practice any one emotion, you'll get better and better at it and better at hopping into that emotion regardless of what's happening around you. I'm so glad you brought that up. That's something that I love to talk about is the capacity to feel. And mm -hmm. a lot of people right now, especially with cold plunging and like all these discomfort, stress challenges, yes, it's, it's good. Please do go ahead and increase your capacity for stress and discomfort and all of these challenging feelings. But don't forget to also increase your capacity for joy and bliss mm. and gratitude and love because most of us have a ceiling threshold. It's like things are too good. When's the other shoe going to drop? And then you end up manifesting that exact scenario. Yeah. So the more that you can expand also your capacity for the high frequency emotions, recognizing that it's du life's duality, baby. Like we don't need to force ourselves to be high vibe or like that all the time yes because everything has its place but you get to trust life you get to trust your joy you get to trust your bliss and you get to trust that it's not going to leave you mm, so how do people increase that threshold for for joy and good vibrations practice baby and the same way you would <laughs> practice you know, cold plunging for being with discomfort. Yeah. Literally set a timer, dance around your house for five minutes <laughs> yes. or like go into breath work and put on music that prompts a high frequency emotion. Like put on your happiest music and do breath work to it and tell me that, you know, you're not feeling lit after because I know I am. <laughs> Absolutely. Over the summer, I got into a practice where I would, I was really prioritizing my joy. And so I would dance every morning, sometimes the beginning of my workout or the end. And I took it seriously because even on the days when I woke up and I was like, oh, I don't really want to dance. The second I put on some feel good song of uptown, funk you up, whatever it was, like I am in it. And 15 minutes later, I was vibrating with mm -hmm. radiance and it simply took prioritizing my joy as maybe it's one of my greatest gifts to the world. Maybe it's the greatest gift we can all give to the world being in our highest joy and our highest frequency that that's where we can actually create the best work that we can create. 100%. Yeah. And you've also talked about energetic hygiene is that what we're talking about now or is that something entirely different energetic hygiene is a whole other can of worms oh, but okay. when we talk about opening up our subtle senses i notice a lot of people right now get really excited about that about their intuitive abilities coming online and accessing guidance from other beings and other realms and we just want to be very careful with that because not everything is for your highest good. And sometimes when we're communicating even with past loved ones, they still have their own opinions and beliefs about the world and you need to use discernment. So whether you are going into breath work and opening yourself up to guidance from a higher power, or from other guides or beings or loved ones, or if you're just kind of wanting to tap into your intuitive abilities in general, always surround yourself in white light, 
as sort of a clearing cleansing technique and be sure to specify i'm open to only what's for my highest good Mm. i am open to only what's for my highest good just to make sure that you're really only calling in what's for you and what is for your most supportive path Mm, that makes a lot of sense i could see how Mm -hmm. being in kind of that open vulnerable state you're open to receive any and anything every and everything Mm -hmm. so i think setting those boundaries as you said is a great way to just protect yourself while you're open and then allow just the good stuff to come in yeah and it's not something to be afraid of but we don't need to be naive and thinking that, you know, in the same way that you wouldn't want to open yourself up to just anybody's guidance, as in like human guidance, you want to use discernment and have boundaries if people are disrespectful or have negative energy or low vibes, like we don't need that in our space. Yeah, It's the same with these other realms and um, other beings and guides and we don't need to open ourselves up to everything. In fact, it can be harmful if we're just open and then we're like all of a sudden taking on everybody else's shit and you don't need that you know even with breathwork sessions it's really important as a facilitator to be clearing my own energy before and after so that i can recognize what's mine and what's not because it's not in my client's highest good for me to take on their shit it's just not so All of that can be a part of energetic hygiene. It's like I said, it's a whole other rabbit hole in itself, but it it is important to touch on when we talk about tapping in and practicing our intuitive subtle senses. Absolutely. I really appreciate the balance that you bring to this world. I mean, (laughs) in everything you do, it's like I can sense that you are this this soft serene soul but you're also strong and powerful and you love a good workout and you love that power and even with this work it's like yes open yourself feel it baby heal it baby but also create boundaries and so i i Mm -hmm. just so admire that balance you bring to this space and on that note i wanted to bring up something i saw on your instagram that i absolutely loved you had this process called feel to heal and Mm -hmm. finding balance in that can you explain that duality that dichotomy a little and how people can use these practices in a way that actually shifts their life and doesn't feel like a roller coaster or like nothing's happening Yeah, for sure. And first of all, thank you so much for saying that because it's something that I really strive for is wanting to take a very holistic approach while also being safe and having fun and setting boundaries. Kind of like love all, but take no shit, you know? (laughs) Yes, amen. (laughs) That's what we're all about here. And as far as the feel it to heal it process, so... Sometimes it can be challenging to know when am I ready for a deep therapeutic experience or when do I need to maybe take a step back from some deep work and focus more on like my sustainable daily clarity practices. Mm. So some examples might be a deep therapeutic experience could be a really deep dive breathwork journey in the way that we've been describing here. It could be a a mushroom journey it could be you know something that takes you really deep it could be like a somatic session something that's usually guided with a facilitator and allows you to process something deep in a very safe nurturing setting that can be very supportive for people who may have experienced like some stagnation in their growth And they're ready for something that's just going to kind of like be rocket fuel for that journey. And then they can stabilize it after. What you don't want to do, which I see a lot here in Austin, just to be super real, is people get like addicted to the high. They'll go to like these ayahuasca journeys all the time. They'll Mm -hmm. be doing breathwork journeys all the time and get really addicted to like the blast off and that like dopamine of, wow, I just had a breakthrough. 
but then they won't ground that in with like the daily more monotonous work like journaling breath work meditation going for walks you know the stuff that is arguably easier but takes more of that consistent action and commitment on the flip side of that sustainable daily clarity practices sometimes you just need to stabilize your growth so Mm -hmm. maybe you've maybe you've had a really big experience maybe you went to an awakened breathwork journey and you're wondering gosh like i just had this really powerful experience but how do i sustain this growth and so you're going to want to focus at that point on stabilizing with journaling meditation breath work grounding maybe sauna and cold plunge anything that can help you on a daily basis come back to your center come back to your self energy and give yourself a space where you can flex and flow those muscles of resilience of joy of creativity that's going to be the real integration that's going to make that breakthrough real in your actual life Mm. so i'm always looking at how can we yes have like a really deep experience yes have a breakthrough but then after that how are we going to make the non-tangible into something tangible in your actual day-to-day experience so we've got deep therapeutic work balanced out with daily clarity practices Mm, i love that (laughs) i've definitely (laughs) been one that gets really excited about the deep experiences and it's like this is going to shift everything and then as i said at the beginning i had to come back to project proud of me of Mm -hmm. okay now i should integrate this for a little bit so Mm -hmm. i really appreciate that so before we transition to just our final kind of fun topic do you mind maybe sharing with us a daily practice guiding us through even a daily practice that people could incorporate into their own lives whether it's a little breathing a little tapping can you show us what that might look like sure yeah i would love Mm -hmm. to share a shortened version of awaken daily which hella and lucas teach all of their clients and they demonstrate at all of their events So what this is going to look like is, first of all, this is going to use a form of activation breathing. So if you're driving, if you're taking a bath or like anywhere that would not be safe for you to potentially pass out if you're like going too hard on this breath, please just find yourself a seated position somewhere comfortable and you'll be good. But the breath is going to look like a deep and full breath in through the nose and out through the mouth so we're going to go with just that kind of breath for this practice where you'll be breathing in through your nose out through your mouth i find that this style breath is very beginner friendly because for some people breathing in and out through your mouth can be a little too activating so all we're going to do here is we're just going to take 10 breaths just like that and then we're gonna hold for 10 at the end and then we'll go for 20 and we'll hold for 20 and then we'll come back to a normal breath so a bit of a modified version of what helen lucas guided you through okay but for anyone who is going to try this with us you might like to place your hands maybe one hand over your heart maybe another hand over your belly just so that you can feel that rise and fall with every breath. And even if your practice today is just realizing, oh wow, it's really difficult for me to feel the rise and fall, meet yourself where you're at. Meet yourself right there and just practice breathing deep and full, seeing if you can expand your belly, diaphragm, and chest. You ready? I'm ready. All right. The hardest part of this is always just counting while breathing. So I'm going to do my best. (laughs) Okay. I'll count with you in my head. Thank you. (laughs) Yeah. And we'll get started here taking a deep breath in through your nose, out through your mouth for one. There's two.
three. Four. Five, expanding your belly, diaphragm, and chest, keeping this breath going in your own time. There's seven, we'll take three more and then a hold. Beautiful work, just breathing in your own time. Let's take one more deep breath in through your nose, letting that out through your mouth. And on empty, you'll just hold your breath gently for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Breathing in again, let's go for 20. There's two, there's five, keeping it going, deep breath in, full breath out. Feeling your hands rise and fall with every breath. Let's go. There's 10. We're going to go for 10 more. Finding your own flow state here. Finding your own rhythm. Noticing if you feel called to tap anywhere on your body, maybe your chest maybe all around your heart space or maybe your belly just finding that tapping there's 15 we'll go for five more breaths and then a hold either staying with this grounding touch or using your tapping anywhere that feels right for you three more breaths let's go Safe to breathe, safe to feel, safe to welcome in any sensation that might be arising. And one more breath deeply in, fully out, and just holding that breath on empty as long as feels right for you. But I'll count to 20 seconds, breathing and holding and just tuning in. And in this space of clarity, you might like to ask the question, what does my inner guidance want me to know right now? Knowing that you can continue holding your breath or you can just take a gentle breath, normal breath, whenever you feel ready, asking what does my inner guidance want me to know right now? And if you're still holding, knowing that you can just come back to a gentle breath, a normal grounding breath, however feels right for you. Noticing how your body feels in this moment. Noticing if there is a lightness or any tingling or a coolness or a heat. Thank you, body. I love you, body. Hmm. Let's take one more breath in together. And one breath out with an ah. ah. 
allowing your hands to just gently fall back into your lap if they haven't already and whenever that feels good you can just allow your eyes to gently open maybe taking a look around the space as you notice how you can expand your awareness to the outside world while maintaining your awareness of your inside world as you take in the light take in the sounds take in the textures of the space right Uh. back here Thank you. (laughs) That was awesome. The way I feel right now, it almost feels like I had some sort of cathartic release, almost like I cried and now I'm good again, Mm -hmm. even though that was just a few minutes long and I didn't cry. But it's like I, I moved through something and now I'm out on the other side and I just feel relaxed and content. So thank Mm -hmm. you. Yeah, absolutely. And if anyone just did that practice with us and you have questions or maybe you're feeling a sensation and you're curious about it, please feel free to just send me a message on Instagram and ask. I'm more than happy to just chat with you and maybe give you some guidance around it. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you so much. So given the time right now, I will skip the last topic I had in mind, but I'm (laughs) sure you will be sharing more about it on your Instagram this year. I'll just mention that I was going to ask you a little bit about plant medicine, microdosing. Mm -hmm. So let's just say for anyone who's interested or has no idea what I'm even talking about, are there places that you recommend going to to learn more or places where where that's just discussed or maybe they have studies something along those lines yeah absolutely so i am going to be talking more about this this year so please feel free to follow along on instagram and if you're interested in books i highly recommend how to change your mind by michael pollan for like the full deep dive experience of learning about the science and the history and the real world experiences of working with medicines like LSD or psilocybin for um, MDMA, if you're interested in the research that's happening right now around healing PTSD in particular with MDMA plus assisted therapy, then I highly, highly recommend the book, A Dose of Hope, which is a phenomenal read and it's a very easy read too. So that's something that I'm keeping my eyes very closely on. It's a medicine that's been extremely impactful in my own personal journey. And um, while I can't directly encourage anyone to work with it, because it is still illegal most places right now, I highly recommend at least reading into it and seeing if there might be any uh, trials near you that you could volunteer for or perhaps talking with your licensed therapist about that as an option and seeing if there are any therapists near you who offer that kind of work. Absolutely. I'll just say Mm -hmm. very quickly that last February, I did a mushroom-assisted breathwork experience. Yeah. And the combination of the two was beyond anything. I mean, I felt as you said earlier, like I was just in this orb of love (laughs) and I actually Mm -hmm. did it with my husband who felt the same way. We both cried and then we went to dinner after and had the most connected loving conversation maybe we've ever had. So I also can't recommend, but recommend (laughs) reading about it. (laughs) Yeah, Um, of course. And I will say if anyone's interested in integration support, particularly mm -hmm. with microdosing or if you've had an experience and you would love support in an integration capacity, that's something I'm very much working with women and um, I'm really excited about that as an option as well. Absolutely. So before we touch on our very quick rapid fire questions to close out, where can people find you if they want to learn more about these plant medicines or potentially work with you or even join Clarity Lab? 
Yeah, you can find me on Instagram at Claire, C-L-A-I-R-E dot Olilla, O-L-L-I-L-A. And if you're interested in checking out a free seven-day trial of my breathwork membership, which is called Clarity Lab, then you can find that at www.claritylabstudio.com. Beautiful. Thank you. I definitely plan on using that 22 free day trial. Yes, for girl. Your free lab. I think it sounds amazing. I'll probably then extend, but got to start somewhere. So yeah. wrapping up really quick, I have four super fun rapid fire questions. The first one's always personalized for the guests. And then the last three stay the same. So the first one in one word, explain the feeling or experience of a breathwork journey. Ooh. Clarity. Love it. Clarity lab. (laughs) Second is what spiritual or health practice would you recommend for everyone on the planet? Meditation. (sighs) Okay. What does this world need most right now for global level up leveling and healing? (laughs) Humility. (laughs) (laughs) I've never heard that one. That's amazing. And then last one, what is your one wish or ask for everyone listening to this today? To love yourself. Mm. Yeah. Beautiful. Like love yourself so hard. Yes. And speak to your inner child every day. <laughs> yes. Thank wow. You. I love you. Oh, thank you so much, Claire. This was amazing. I feel like I just went through a breathwork journey. That was (laughs) incredible. (laughs) That was so fun. I've also never answered rapid fire questions that quickly before. And also I just looked at the time and it's one, three, three, four, four, which there's so many meetings to those numbers for me, but me too. 33 (laughs) is like my thing. So I'm here for it. (laughs) <laughs> well, 44 well, is the numbers of the awakened facilitator who passed last year who was in my cohort and <gasps> those numbers always show up like in the wow. best of times oh so my gosh we've got so, them both you're on our side so this was a message so people have to listen <laughs> to this there's something special <laughs> about this interview well thank you again truly from the bottom of my heart the bottom of the hearts of all of my listeners and i hope they check you out because you truly are amazing keep spreading your love keep spreading your light my friend thank you so much Devin. thank you everyone for listening big love yes and for everyone listening we'll see you next week bye hey friends I hope you enjoyed this week's episode as much as I did. This interview with Claire was so much fun and it's honestly going to take me a while to integrate all of her nuggets of wisdom and in classic Claire fashion, she would probably recommend taking a while to integrate it, that it's not always a one and done. Take some time to sit with it, to meditate with it, to breathe with it. I think my biggest takeaway from today was simply having more self-love, self-compassion through all of life's ups and downs and remembering to speak to our inner children on the days when we desperately need to feel seen, supported, loved, and held. So I will definitely continue to do that and I also plan on checking out Claire's Clarity Lab because I am definitely not done taking in her wisdom and her amazing toolkit of practices that she teaches her clients. If you enjoyed this week's episode, please don't forget to share with a family member or friend who might also be interested to learn a little bit more about breathwork, plant medicine microdosing, the journey of going from lost to found, manifestation, and so much more. I love you all. I see you all. I already cannot wait to be with you again next week. And without further ado, (laughs) goodbye for now, my friends.